Okay, please take a look at the definition at the top of this page. A compound inequality is an inequality formed by joining two inequalities with the word and or the word or. I'd like you to underline the word joining. And our book's definition says two or more. None of the examples we're going to do today is more than two, but we are definitely working with inequalities that have combined two today. As the definition says, they're joined by the word and or the word or, as you can see here. And those look different when we graph them. And inequalities end up having a line on the graph that's joined by the two points of the numbers that are part of the inequality. That'll make a lot more sense to you after we do the next examples. We are going to graph <clears throat> x is greater than 2. So let's do that first. 1, 2, 3. We're going to circle what number? 2. Does the circle stay opened or get closed? And what direction does our arrow go? <coughs> that way. Our second inequality is x is less than or equal to 5. What happens to my circle? In what direction is the arrow? Now here comes our compound inequality where we put two inequalities on the same number line. I want you to watch what I'm doing first and then you can write down what I've done. So put your pencils down. Remember when I've talked about graphing inequalities, all you have to do is picture zooming in on the part of the number line we need. All we need on this number line is 2 and 5. Those are the two numbers that we're graphing, true? Yes. What's that true about the 2? It stays opened. And it goes to the... Right. But it's going to stop at the 5 because this inequality is also less than or equal to 5. So there's my inequality. Go ahead and get that graphed. When you're ready, I want you to hold your pencil right by your chin so I know that I can move on because the next thing I want to do, I want everybody's eyes on my screen. Okay, we're almost all there. And inequalities can be written with just one X and no word and. I like to always start with the part on the right because it's in the right order. X is less than or equal to 5. Isn't that what we talked about with our flip-flops and order matters and inequalities? Mm -hmm. The X is greater than 2. Well, my X is going to stay in the middle, and the 2 is going to end up over here. So what's going to have to happen to the symbol? This inequality, written without the and, really shows what's on the number line. X is in the middle. Any number that's on this number line could be our X. The 2 is on the left. The symbol shows that it's open. This symbol shows that we've got a closed symbol, and it ends at the 5. This written inequality is exactly what we've graphed. Can you see the pieces of it? 
There's my two. There's my open. X is what's in the middle, including the five. There's the symbol, and there's the end. What we're saying is any number on this number line could make this inequality true. Two is less than three, which is less than or equal to five. All of that is true, isn't it? Five could go in for x. Two is less than five, which is less than or equal to five. 4.5 could go in there, right? With or inequalities, they don't get rewritten that way. We use the word or. And are you ready for this? Or inequalities, they go off in both directions. So let's graph the or. Y is less than or equal to negative 2. Filled in circle going what direction? They keep showing me that way, but their that way is opposite of me because I'm facing them. Y is greater than 1. Circle it and then to the right. So here's my or. When I put them on the same graph, I need negative 2. I need 1. I am zooming in and I'm not being ultra specific, but when I do this, I was picturing zero about here. Can you guys see what I mean by that? And inequalities tend to have a small set of numbers that make them true because they're contained between these two points. Whereas or inequalities tend to have a whole bunch of possible numbers that can make them true because they go off in two directions and those two directions just keep going and going and going and going. So we're ready to decipher this with some words? Yep. Open up. Here's what we're going to do on the inside. Let me zoom out a little bit. We're going to read through the written statement. From that, we're going to make a written inequality. We're going to graph the inequality. And by the end, we're going to say if it's an and or an or. You might be able to say this earlier, but I want you to wait and see until it's graphed to make sure. I'm thinking of a number that is greater than negative 8 and less than or equal to 4. So my written inequalities, I'm going to have two x's. The first x is what? Greater than negative 8. Greater than negative 8. And my second x is? Less than or equal to 4. Are we thinking an and or an or? Okay, let's see. Where's what's gonna get graphed to the left? The x is less than equal to four. The negative eight is gonna be graphed to the left, isn't it? What's gonna be graphed on the right? Once I get those on there, then I'm gonna think about the circles and which direction the lines are going. What kind of circle am I gonna put for the negative eight? 
What kind of circle am I going to put for the positive 4? Now look back at these. Which directions will the lines go? Do they go together or do they go apart? Yeah, the x is greater than negative 8 means that this goes to the right. And less than or equal to negative or to positive 4 goes to the left. What kind of inequality do we have? If we have an and inequality, that means we can rewrite it with only one x. If the left inequality originally said x is greater than negative 8, when we rewrite it, we're going to have negative 8 is less than. less than x. Makes sense when you look at it, doesn't it? Let's try the second one together. I'm thinking of a number that is at most 0 or at least 2. You guys might be sitting there going, come on, it's 6 period. I don't know what you mean by those. Look what I gave you. A lovely chart of math translated into English. Look what's on this page. Do you see it most or at least on either of these two lists? Yes. Okay. I'm thinking of a number that is at most zero. So what should my x and my zero say? At most is less than or equal to. That means the x is going to stay lower than the 0 or be equal to it. It's not going to be bigger than it. That's why it means at most. 0 is going to be the biggest possible number. Does that make sense when you think about it? Yes. Okay. The second is or at least 2. What symbol do you think might be going in between those? Is at least on the greater than or equal to list? Let's graph them. Zero, two. What happens to both circles? The zero arrow goes to the. Oops, that's a really messy arrow. And the two zero goes to the right. So what kind of inequality is this for a compound? Or. So we're going to put the word or here. And we're going to show that this is an or here. It's not always this obvious, but look what's right here. And look what's right here. <laughs> Okay, I gave you this chart because I confuse them. When I think about the at most or at least, I have to think about what does that mean? I know I've got a limit to one of them. Keep this chart. Keep thinking about what it means for at least. What does this mean for at least? It means the lowest number possible is going to be 2, and everything else that's going to fit in that x is going to be bigger than it. Okay, so use this translation list. Look at the clock. I'm not giving you additional work. Your job today is to try to finish these four, and we will glue it in tomorrow. <laughs>